Narayanam Namasitam Naram Chaibanarutamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tito Jayavadhyare Mr. Pureshu Bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevya Bhagati Yotamashaki Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki Nigama Kapadur Garicham Naram Sukhamutaram Dabdravi Samitam Ribata Bhagatam Rasha Mario Mahora Hora Shubha Vibha Kaham Krishna Sadam Vahagate Dhammaginiti Karona Stadu Samasha Paranipo Dunoditam Tama be a double shoot of Bishop and Bibo, some happy day, and every rump, but it's a rump of Yahido or Marjum, some clays in the Vanamusanti, none yet a home. Jack was at an umchadan umbushum had a bashan a pack with the potato, a jog of a body booty, co hearted them, but it um shed a madam. An out of Bashamam shack shad, Bucky Ogum, Bucky said, you know, Jack was shut for their sammy tum. Jack was at an umchadan umbushum had a bashan a pack with the yard, you can't do what you're ever doing. Kovataratam bhajatam shamakundaham Omagyanati marandasya gananganam sadatya chaksuru miritam yanatashmahi sigarvenamah Sri Chaitanya manobhishtam stapitam yanabhutare sayam rupakiram yam darati sa parantikam Vandayam sigaru sirtha parakamram shigarun vaishnavam sya sirupam shagadatam sahagana raganatam mitam stam sadevam Sadvaitam sabadutam parijana sayitam krishna chaitanya devam Sīrāna Krishna Paran Sahagana Dārita Shivishya Kanpitam Shāng Namāṁ Vishnu Paraya Krishna Pastaya Bhūtare Shimati Vakti Vedanta Shāmita Namanimaste Sarasati Devi Karavani Pacharini Nīrvashesa Sanyodhi Paskata Desadani Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sariko Vakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rāma Hare Rāma 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 Hare Hare Good morning, welcome to Motivational Monday, Jai Sri Radha, Jean, Bhai Bhavi, Devi Dasi, Hari 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 Bo. Rob, what's the word this morning, Monday morning? It's a beautiful morning with a beautiful sunrise. Uh, one small perk to the smoky air. It's a nice orange sun this morning. Now we not only have the smoke coming in from California, Oregon, but we have our own fires up in Parley's Canyon. So just a lot of fun here surrounded by it yeah but that's what the material world is it just it's just a more graphic illustration of what's the perennial situation here you know this material world is compared to a forest fire time burns everything up in its subtle form you can't see it but uh, you just look at your body as it ages and dwindles and gets weak throughout the years and you'll see the effects you you may not see the fire itself but you'll definitely see how everything is being consumed and burned by the fire. And so the actual fires are just a metaphor for the, for the fire that we put ourselves in when we left the spiritual world and came down to this material world. <laughs> I have to say this verse. I have to brag a little bit. I, I just, I don't know, I said, true, you shouldn't do this. This, you, know, you should be more modest. You should be more humble. You shouldn't blow your own horn this way. But and I just, I just thought I have to do this. So I apologize to you all for my hubris and my arrogance. But when I saw this verse, "Idami pumsas tapasasya dasha shritasya shritasya abhiti todi tiyar kabi benuri gadu tamashobhiranam," I have to share you this little pastime which occurred probably in 1973, where in Australia in St Kilda. Ugrashava had rented a house for Prabhupada where he was staying during, I think, what was his second visit to Australia. He was preaching to all of us. I think we were mostly the book distribution teams. And he was asking, what is the verse by which Krishna is glorified, Uttama Shloka, and yours truly, Charu, gave Prabhupada the verse. <laughs> That was one of the verses back then, 45 plus years ago, that I had committed to memory because it was a very, very crucial key verse. And the confirmation of that was that Prabhupada uh, tested us of all the people in the room, 20, 15, 20 senior devotees in the room, Prabhupada wanted to know which one could come up with that verse. It was me. <laughs> I apologize to everyone for sounding off like that, but just wanted to show you that this verse is not new to me. 
I had memorized this verse almost 50 years ago uh, because it's an important verse. It's a key, essential verse. And what a beautiful verse. Itam vipumsas. Pumsa means you and I. And we're all trying for improvement. Who is not striving for improvement? There are <clears throat> books written, theses, to the effect that the strongest drive within each and every one of us is to some or other improve. <clears throat> so how do we improve? We improve by discipline. There's no improvement. There's no elevation without control of your senses. Dogs, cats, they can't improve. They're, we have a Pedro's my parrot or I'm his human. He's a blue and gold macaw. And he's just darling. He's so affectionate towards me, antagonistic towards everyone else. Um, and yet he's never, you know, he has he has these qualities. He has a vocabulary, maybe a dozen words, and it's gonna he's gonna be the same when he's fifty years old. Right now he's ten or twelve. He's not gonna be any different. He's not gonna improve. He's not gonna mature uh, during his entire lifetime. Where he where he's reached is where he's gonna stay, basically. But that's not true for us. Uh, we have such capacity. We're made in the image of God. We can constantly improve. I read the biography of uh, Gandhi many, many years ago. And in his uh, 70s, he was learning Bengali. He was learning a new language the day before he got assassinated. And that's the spirit. And what we learn in this life, we can carry on in the next life. There's never an end to moving upwards, onwards, forward improving and, and we have to have discipline that's called tapasya and with discipline then shrutasya you know learning verses is is a it's a it's a decoration it's an embellishment you can quote scriptures in the original sanskrit i've always felt that it was a a beautiful asset attribute to have but it it requires discipline it requires repetition it requires consistency so Basically, it's not an accident that the first word in, in this verse, which talks about self-improvement, is tapasya, because without discipline, nothing else can come. Discipline is the foundation on which all of the attributes come. So sutasya, sutasya means learned. Um, suktasya, chaburi datayo, avijatoditya, kavibir, poetry, science, philosophy, yoga, asceticism, Scriptural knowledge, intellectual acumen. These are all decorations. These are all attributes. These are all landmarks on the road to self-improvement. And yet this verse says, whatever it may be and whatever area you have made progress, you have taken the assets that God gave you, the raw materials, you have polished them, you have sharpened them, you have improved them. You're on television, you're quoted in the newspaper. You communicate with a large congregation. You have a beautiful family. You're in a, an employer and you have uh, employees who look up to you, who key on you. All of these attributes, all of these embellishments, all of these decorations are not meant to be displayed for one's own personal promotion, aggrandizement, sense gratification. You were given those basic seed-like talents and attributes and you are given the inspiration, Sataya Shradiyotas, Tasharam Labhate Chatham, Mayaiva Mihitani Tan. It is said that whatever talents and aspirations one gets, as well as the inspiration and the drive and the conviction to sharpen and develop and evolve those, all of that, the raw attributes, as well as the inspiration, Sataya Shradiyotas, as well as the faith, that you can take those assets and parley them into some profit. It's all coming from God in the region of the heart. <clears throat> and so therefore the conclusion is that we need then to redirect <clears throat> all of that back to the Lord upon whom it rests. Everything that exists, both phenomenal and numinal, spiritual and material, emanates from, is maintained by, rests in and ultimately is withdrawn back into the body of the Lord. So 
So what business do we have other than to use choice, poetry, and literary phrases and devices in order to honor that Lord from whom everything comes, in whom everything rests, and into whom everything was with the John. The exact translation of this verse is, learned circles, learned men, not just anybody, but learned men have positively included, concluded. This is very emphatic here. Learned circles have positively concluded that the infallible purpose, now just listen to the verbiage here, it doesn't leave you any wiggle room. It says you've got to do this. It's not optional. It is mandatory. We have a rule for our volunteers from Help Exchange, Work Away, and Wolfa. We have programs, we have classes, morning and evening, at seven in the morning and six in the evening. And in our profile page, we say, these are optional. If you want to learn more about the culture of bhakti, then by all means attend them. But if you, you know, if you don't want to, then there's no onus to do so. But it says in big letters on our profile page, the one mandatory program weekly is Sundays at five o'clock. You have to go. That's all in capital letters, bold. And then another part of the profile, it says, if you miss one Sunday, it's okay. We'll forgive you. We'll give you a warning. If you miss a second Sunday, you'll be asked to leave. So this, kind of, this is kind of the same language here. You can almost see it in bold letters, capital. Learned circles have positively concluded that the infallible purpose of the advancement. In other words, it's not, it's not leaving you any wiggle room. We had one volunteer. She'd newly arrived. And, uh, I noticed she wasn't at the Sunday program, which is a very seeker-friendly program. You know, we we have kirtan by some talented kirtaniyas and by to Jai Krishna. You cannot fault the music. It's just as good as it exists in any temple in America. And the talk, we go to great lengths to prepare them and deliver them on a plate uh, in such a palatable way, in such a relevant way that people get tools they can use for their own challenges starting Monday morning. So there's no excuse, there's no reason not to go. We're not trying to proselyte, but we're just trying to share universal truths which will help people in their path um, upwards and onwards. So one girl, she didn't show up. And when we came back, after having had the feast and the kirtan and the prashadam and socialize there, she just sitting in the common room texting her friend. And I said, uh, her name and I said, did you happen to not, uh, not remember that the feast is mandatory? And I got this blank look. I said, did you read your our profile page before you apply to be a, a volunteer here? And again, blank look. And I says, it says in big capital letters, there's no options, mandatory. I said, it's okay this one time. Uh, maybe you forgot. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt, but don't do it again. So. It's unequivocal, it's unambiguous, it's mandatory. If you're a volunteer here, you have to go to the Sunday services at five o'clock. It's only an hour, but it's not optional. So just look at the language. Glor taking whatever it is you've sharpened, whatever it is you've enhanced, whatever it is that you've developed, it's not optional, folks. It's mandatory. If you're a poet, you have to to use your poetry to glorify the Lord in Uttama Shoka, transcendental choice words. If you're a scientist, you have to use what scientific training, what scientific discoveries you've made to reveal and to indicate an intelligent designer, a supreme personality God. Atheistic science has no value whatsoever. It has no relevance, it has no value, and it is misleading. It does a disservice to mankind in general. It's like saying, we're going to study the shadow. We have a resolute fixed determination. We have a bias. We have a prejudice, which is not scientific, right? First thing science is, is unbiased and unprejudiced. You're supposed to have an open mind. And yet the atheistic materialist scientists start with a prejudice. We're going to study the shadow. We're going to ignore the person we're going to study the shadow and ignore the substance. We're going to delve into the illusion without acknowledging the reality from which it comes. We're going to go for the mirage 
and not the real water, which can never exist in the desert. This is their predisposed bias and prejudice against an ID, an intelligent designer. So all philosophy and all literature, all sociology, everything is useless if it is not acknowledged and recognized that it is from God, the Supreme Person, that everything comes. It is by Him that everything is maintained. The so-called laws of physics, the laws of material nature, gravity and thermodynamics is nothing more than the determination of God to provide a stable world in which we can count on the sun rising every day and we can count on the terra firma underneath us. We can count on having air and water. Maybe we haven't acted in such a way as to merit or deserve it, but another thing we can count on is the overriding, overreaching, all-encompassing mercy of the Lord, that even though we're not the best of God's children, in fact, just the opposite, he does not begrudge us the basic necessities of life. Nitya, nityanam, chetanas, chetanam, eko yao veradati kama, that supreme, singular, eternal, from whom we come and in whom we rest, and into whom we again are taken, he is always friendly and kindly disposed to his living entities. There's nothing you can do that will ever cause God to stop supporting you, stop providing for you. But his fondest wish for you is that you'll rededicate everything, not to yourself, but to him. As our supreme loving Father, whether we acknowledge it or not, everything that we have, everything that we are, has its basis and support and origin in the supreme personality of God. So those who are free from illusion, those who are not suffering from a poor fund of knowledge, they use their poetry, they use their austerity, they use their learning, they use their wealth, their influence, they use their words. They try to use as much as possible and as feasible and practical family members and co-workers in a, in a huge, universal, symphonic glorification of the Lord. And that's what we are. We're members of the orchestra. We're members of the symphony. Some of us play the oboe. Some of us play the cymbals. Some of us play the bass. Some of us play the cello. Some of us play the violins. Some of us play the trumpet. Some of us play this, that, and the other thing, but we all have our part. We all have our individual parts, which are not meant, we're not meant to each one be doing our own thing. We're meant to be symphonizing, harmonizing, glorifying the Lord. You look at animals, you look at these nature shows on television, and they're all, there's something syn synthesized about the animals. They even hear Sometimes on a summer evening, when the sun goes down, there's a beautiful crimson, velvety sunset in the west. A couple of the little llamas will start pronging. They'll, their legs will go on stiff, and they'll just start pronging. Four legs. Normally, they walk, they walk side to side. The two legs on the right side go forward, and then the two legs on the left side, and the two legs on the right side, two legs on the left side. But when they're in this celebratory, God-centered, uh, just giving thanks to the creator mood. They're, they just, their legs, or all four legs are stiff, and some or other they achieve with the joints of their four, uh, what is it, four legs, they some or other achieve um, this bounciness. And the little babies will start, and then the uh, younger females and males will start, and then the, even the old males, the ones who have the old hips, the ones who are creaky, kind of normally go like that. Pretty soon they're all pronging, is what I call it, around the property. They're just celebrating God, celebrating life, celebrating nature, celebrating all the abundant gifts that God has unbegrudgingly blessed us with. So similarly, we should not be apart from that which is a symphony, a natural universal symphony glorifying God. We need to use whatever talents and abilities we have. The songs we write, the instruments we play, the music should all be about Krishna. <clears throat> Sri Krishna, your pure charisma, your flute playing is so intoxicating, singing your song down in Vrindavan, pleasing the gopis and all the devotees and chanting the hearts of the bhakti yogis. 
in a trance you dance the divine romance of Rasa Lita with Radhara and the Bhagavad Gita you teach us bhakti. Your divine pastimes are so sublime they refresh the mind, they refresh the heart and fill the mind. They give relief just like the monsoon after the lingering heat. You lifted them out with your little finger to the sweet butter thief known as Baby Gopal, the killer of Kamsa, the lover of Radha. Your complexion is dark blue like the ocean. I offer my devotion with all of my emotion. Gopi Maradali and Amarada, Yukta Marada, Makta Maradam, just a Maradam, Sister Marada, Marada, Yari Petera Karamaram, Gopa Marada, Govo Maradam, Yastio Maradam, Sister Maradam, Dari Tam Maradam, Paritam Maradam, Maradari Petera Karamaradam. Now is a eight verses called the Madarastaka, eight verses written by Balabacharya about five, six hundred years ago on the sweetness of Krishna. Eight verses, Udama Shloka. Just like it says, Uddhama Shloka Garnara Varnanam. It describes the qualities of Krishna, which are Garnara Varnanam. They are not material qualities. They are not limited qualities in this material world. But they are unlimited qualities of sweetness. It says your lips are sweet. Your face is sweet. Your eyes are sweet. Your smile is sweet. Your loving heart is sweet. Everything is sweet about the Lord of sweetness. Your words are sweet. Your personality is sweet. Your Garments are sweet, your posture is sweet, your movements are sweet, your surrounding is sweet. Everything is completely sweet about the Lord of sweetness. Your flute playing is sweet, your footprints are sweet, your eating is sweet, your sleeping is sweet. Everything is completely sweet about the Lord of sweetness. The things that you do, your deeds are sweet, your adventures are sweet, your um, thieving of hearts is sweet, your loving relationships are sweet, the things that are offered to you are sweet, your countenance is sweet, everything is completely sweet about the Lord of sweetness. Your river Yamuna is sweet. Her rippling waves are sweet. Her waters are sweet. Her lotus flowers are sweet. Everything is completely sweet about the Lord of sweetness. The gopis, your cowherd girlfriends are sweet. Your leelas, your pastimes are sweet. Your meetups are sweet. Your adventures are sweet. Your sidelong glances are sweet. Your manners are sweet. Everything is completely sweet about the Lord of sweetness. The gopas, your cowherd boyfriends are sweet. The cows are sweet. Your walking stick is sweet. Your unlimited creation is sweet. Your your victories are sweet. Your heroism is sweet. Everything is completely sweet about the Lord of sweetness. This is just one example of hundreds and thousands of verses. Choice verses of poetry which are written to describe the Gunarnava, the unlimited spiritual qualities of the Lord. Normally, quality means, in our experience, it's limited. But the gunas, the qualities of Krishna, are unlimited. They are not material qualities. Atmarama Shamuniya Nagranti Opriya Korvanti Haitikam Itam Bhutam Ganahari. Great sages, great transcendentals who left aside everything to do with this limited material world. They relish, they take unlimited pleasure in narrating and listening to the pastimes of the unlimited sweet supreme personality of God. So the qualities of Krishna are not to be mistaken, they're not to be mixed in with the qualities of ordinary living beings. Prabhupada says in the purport to this verse, human intellect is developed. Again, he's not leaving any latitude. He's not letting you get out of this, folks. Human intellect is developed for what? For advancement in learning, art, science, philosophy, physics, chemistry, psychology, economics, and politics, etc., etc., by such by culture of such knowledge, the human society can attain perfection of life. That's our drive towards improvement, ultimately with some uh, unspecified goal of perfection out there in front of us. 
Now, what is perfection? Prabhupada's going to describe the perfection of all those arts and sciences. They culminate in the realization of the Supreme Lord Vishnu. We are therefore directed that if we are actually, this is a very important word, if we are not artificially or falsely or pretentiously, but we are actually advanced in learning, we should aspire to use that learning in the service of Lord Vishnu. Prabhupada finishes the purport here by saying, unfortunately, <laughs> persons who are enamored by the external beauty of Vishnu Maya, God's external energy, do not understand that culmination of perfection or self-realization depends on Vishnu. Vishnu Maya means sense enjoyment, which is transcendental and ultimately miserable. <clears throat> Sri Narada Muni, who is the speaker of this verse, he's explained that all paraphernalia of the entire universe is but an emanation of the Lord out of his different parashya shaktir ivadaiva suryate, out of his multifarious and diffused energies. Everything has come from his energy. Just like in the universe, everything comes from the rays of the sun. Everything emanates from that. And it is the rays of the sun that maintain the universe. We couldn't exist very long without the rays of the sun. And it is the rays of the sun that also create the cloud by pounding on the ocean. And the cloud pours rainfall and brings greenery and crops with which we can sustain ourselves. And in the end, when it's time for cosmic annihilation, the sun will get 12 times hotter. And just as the sun has been the cause of the creation and the cause of the maintains, scripture tells us that at the time of annihilation, the sun will get 12 times hotter, burn everything to ashes. So the sun is also the cause of the destruction as well. So what is different in this universe from the sun? So just like the fire is seated in one corner of the room, I come from Pennsylvania. My parents inherited a, a house from my great-great-grandparents that was built in the Revolutionary War. It served as an inn. So in each one of the three downstairs rooms, it's a big fireplace, big half of a half of an oak tree. It, makes the mantle, and then there's a big, deep uh, place with a grate, and then it even has a angle iron welded or fixed, concreted in, so you could, they could swing it out and they could hang their pots, their soup pots or their stew pots over the fire. So the fire is in one place, in one part of the room, and yet sitting on a winter's day, rubbing our hands, warming, feeling all nice toasty, you say the fire feels good. So that means the energies of the fire, light and heat, are non-different from the fire. They're the same as the fire, non-different. So similarly, God is like the fire. He's like the sun. Everything comes from him, rests upon him, and, and, and is taken back into him. So really, there's nothing but the fire. And what we see and perceive as heat and light are just different categories of the one thing, the fire. Similarly, Kapil Dev, when he counsels his mother, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, Yata Niyo Pitagumara, Yato Mukad Vishpulegan, Damad Vapisham, Atmi Abhavi Pitam, Yata Niyo Pitagum. The soul, the living force, the principle in this universal cosmic manifestation is Lord Vishnu. He is the fire. Now, fire can be broken down into sparks, it can be broken down into heat, it can be broken down into flame, and it can be broken down into um, uh, sparks and smoke as well. But really the sparks, the smoke, the flame, they're all nothing other than different manifestations of the fire itself. So the fire, the original fire, it's flame, it's sparks and it smokes are all one. In one sense, the flame, the sparks and the smoke are different from the fire, but in another sense, in every one of them, the integrity of the fire is present. Without the fire, the smoke, the sparks, and the flames, 
could not exist. So the cosmic manifestation, the material energy itself, is compared to the smoke. Because when the smoke passes over the sky, so many different forms and shapes appear. And they resemble many known and unknown manifestations. The sparks are compared to ourselves, the jivas, the living beings who permeate and support jiva bhutam mahabaho yeyam dayate jagat. Now the flames are compared to the pardana, the material nature. And one has to know that each and every one of these is effective, is extant, simply because of being empowered by the quality of the original fire. Therefore, all of them, the material energy, the cosmic destination, the living energy, the smoke, the flames, and the fires are but different energies of the Lord. Now, those who only recognize the material nature as real and hypoth what is it? Hypoth hypothesize that nature is the cause or prakriti is the cause of everything, Prabhupada very politely and delicately says and very kindly says, they are not correct in their conclusion. Why? Maya dakshin of prakriti suyate sa chodachan he tu nanina jagat vipadavarta. This jagat, this material nature has no independent existence any more than the smoke exists independent. Has anyone in the history of the world ever seen smoke without fire? No. Anyone ever seen sparks without fire? Anyone ever seen flames without fire? And yet the materialistic atheist scientists would talk about smoke independent from, as if it was self-manifest, as if it existed independent of the fire, sparks independent of the fire, flames independent of, it makes no sense whatsoever. It's like insisting that reality is the shadow and ignoring the man, the person, the reality, who casts, who, who throws the shadow. This non-God-centered, atheistic, materialistic way of thinking, Prabhupada said, it has a name. There is a pejorative name for this kind of thinking in the Vedas. Prabhupada gives it Aja Galashtana Naya. It is called trying to milk the nipples on the neck of a goat. Those of you who have spent time in the country, farms, around goats, know that the male goats, they have these fleshy bags that hang from their necks and they look like the tits of the female goats, but they have no milk. They only resemble the tits, but they have no power to produce milk. Now, if you think it looks like a tit, so I'll, I'll squeeze it and I'll try to get milk out of it, that will be a waste of your time due to ignorance, due to a poor fund of knowledge. The nipples on the neck of a goat may seem like sources of milk, but trying to get milk from those nipples will be fully. Thinking that a woman can get pregnant on her own without a man is just foolishness. Never happened in the history of the world, never will happen. Imagine a obviously eight, nine month pregnant woman walks into the room. Everybody, congratulations. When's your due date? How do you know if it's a boy or a girl? Who's the father? Oh no father. No, I didn't. I just did it myself. I don't. I didn't need a man. Hello, never happened. Never will happen. It, so you talk about nature. You talk about prakriti as being the first cause. Not, not. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. It's like talking about a woman getting pregnant independently. Sri Stees Titi Parlaya Shada Shakti Chayeva Upanani Bibart Ichana Bhuvam Chayesite Cha Govinam. Aripurusham Tamahang Pajami. Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, credits the Supreme Personality of God, Godhead Govinda for being that personality who by his glance impregnates material nature. Material nature is eight elements. Bumiyarapon, Arovya, Kamanodavirucha. 
four, five subtle and three, uh, sorry, five gross and three subtle. Earth, air, fire, water, uh, ether are the five subtle. Mind, intelligence, and false ego. I'm sorry, are the gross, mind, intelligence, and false ego are the subtle. And yet Krishna goes on to say in fifth verse, seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Aparayami Tachtu and Yambina Prakriti Jiva Bhuta Mahabhuya. Beyond those eightfold material elements, there is another part of me, another spark emanating from me, which are the living beings, the spirit souls. And they pervade and support this entire cosmic manifestation. And then he goes on to say, Uttamaj Purushas Tuanya. Beside the particles, beside the little sparks, there is in the background, there is as the origin of both material nature, the living beings, and the pradana, there is myself, the supreme personality, Uttama Purushastanya. And you'll notice the similarity, the word that's used in this verse, Uttama Purushastanya. Besides the material nature, besides the living beings, there is me, the supreme, the fire from whom the sparks and the smokes and the flame come. And he is described as Uttama above darkness, having expanded and supported all of material nature, he himself is not part of material nature. He remains Anya. He remains an other. And it is him who is described as Uttama. And he should be glorified by Uttama shlokas, by words, phrases, sentences, paragraphs, <laughs> poetry, um, theses, which are Uttama Gunarna Bhadama, which have nothing to do with describing this material nature, nothing to do with describing ultimately the sparks, the smoke of the flames, but describing that fire, that Vedanti Tat Tatvam Tatvam Yavsgaram Brahmiti Paramatmiti Bhagamaniti Sabjate. The absolute truth is perceived in three phases according to the level of your realization. He's perceived as impersonal Brahman. He's perceived as Paramatma, the super soul within the heart. But ultimately, by those with eyes of devotion who uh, take the bona fide path of serving the Lord under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master, the Lord appears as Bhagavan in his full-fledged personality as the supreme personality of God. Prabhupada says that Materially, we can perceive the sunshine spreading itself all over the material creation. And because of the presence of the sunshine, different forms and varieties and shapes spring up with different names and activities. But ultimately, they're all resting on the sun. Ultimately, the sun is one. Similarly, it is said in the Vedas, Sarv Kal Idav Brahma. Everything is but an expansion of the Supreme Brahman. And who is the supreme Brahman? That is Brahmano He Pratishtetham. The impersonal aspect, the effulgence, the sunshine, which causes the birth and pervades and supports this material manifestation is but an emanation from the Bhagavan, the supreme personality of Godhead. Therefore, Prabhupada says, the supreme Lord is, read my lips, everything, everything. And he is one without an equal, one without differentiation. There is no existence separate from the supreme personality of God. So Prabhupada's very definitive, very assertive here this morning, not letting us off the hook. In another part of his commentaries of the Bhagavad Gita, he says many people have qualities, and those qualities originate from Gunatmana, the source of all qualities, the supreme transcendental personality of Godhead. So there are many people, movie stars, scientists, philosophers, wealthy philosophers, who have many different qualities. Now, one can ignore glorifying great politicians, great leaders, great philanthropists, great artists, great dancers, great musicians. Um, one can ignore um, glorifying and honoring living beings who are reflections of the glory and talents and qualities of God and not have any negative consequences to that. But one cannot ignore, one cannot discount, one cannot take off the board 
the original fire, the original source from which everything comes without being, the pro words probably used here are thoroughly condemned. Without being thoroughly condemned. So those who have an explanation for the creation of the universe, who those who have a scientific, so-called scientific training, and they present their atheistic, non-God-centered series, theories for the creation and maintenance of this material world. Those who have art and architecture, mechanics, uh, which are presented before human society without the element of God consciousness, God centered in this, they are thoroughly condemned. Now, on the other hand, when advancement of knowledge is applied in the service of the Lord, the whole process becomes absolute. Everyone benefits. The whole process is of harmonizing, playing your instrument in that universal symphony. Each and every one of us has a part. Whatever talents and aptitudes we've been gifted with, whether it be on the scientific side, the literary side, the humanitarian side, the domestic family raising side, the, the, uh, the, the computer, the tech side, whatever area it may be in which we're anointed or gifted, the perfection of that is to play our instrument, whether it be a violin, or a trumpet, or a drum, or cymbals, or an oboe. We need to play our instrument with the purpose of glorifying the creation, the supreme personality of God. Every one of us needs to participate full-heartedly. That will create the peaceful situation in the world after which we're always hungry. I remember a story about one great conductor and he had a huge uh, London Philharmonic Orchestra and they were practicing for their um, hallmark concert of the season. They were running through their paces and all. And the person who played the oboe, which is just a little tiny flute, he was thinking, you know, there's the big bass drums and there's the cymbals and there, there's 120 violins and all and I'm just one little oboe. So who cares? Who's going to miss me? And he decided he would just skip his little doo -doo 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 part, you know, when it came. And as soon as he did that, the great conductor, stop! Stop the whole organ, stop the violin, stop the bass drum, stop the cello, stop the flute. He said, why didn't the oboe play in there? He immediately recognized the omission of the oboe. So similarly, Prabhupada and Krishna are saying to you this morning, you're needed. You're created to fulfill your part. The orchestra is not going to be the same without you. And you cannot dodge. You cannot sidestep. You cannot avoid the responsibility that is given to you when God breathed life into you and when God enriched you with talents and abilities. You cannot turn your back on those and be happy. Failing to rise up to the mission with which the Lord has entrusted and empowered you for is a formula for stress, for anxiety, for midlife crisis, for altars, for an existential angst which you cannot drown or solve or forget by binge watching TV or alcohol or drugs or even excessive attachment to sports or bodybuilding or recreation or CNN or politics, Democrats, Republicans. The only way you can step into the middle of the person that you were created to be and experience the bliss, the fulfillment, and ultimate divine love for which you were created is to get right into the middle of what the Lord has created to you. And along with all living beings, play your part, pick up your instrument and play it with all of the talent and ability and expertise of which you're capable. Cheto Darpana Marjanam Babada Vagni Nam Soyam Kaivar Chandika Vidya Badaji Mananam Budi Bardana Priti Param Purnami Tashvaranam Savat Mashnapanam Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankritanam. 
Chanting the holy names cleanses the heart, extinguishes the flames, breaks the chains, blesses the earth at large with moonlight waves, discharging waves of nectar, our sense has been craven since ancient days. The holy names put all their blessings to shame. Krishna Govinda chanted anywhere, everywhere. The mercy Shakti is fully there. Divine app to restore your mental software. Zap the mile or restart your heart. Tap the reservoir of loving care. No hard and fast rules, no lessons, no school. The bliss of bhakti rare, yet free for the taking. Only declare your heart is breaking in divine love awakening. Night and day by constant recitation, chant the great mantra without hesitation, free from temptation with the sensation of feeling yourself lower than the straw in the street, more tall than the tree, devoid of all sense of all prestige. Humility is the key to enjoy the vibration eternally. <clears throat> so glorify the Lord, the transcendental verses. Don't forget to take a breath. <laughs> in between verses or you'll get choked up <laughs> like me <laughs> but I think you get the idea on this motivational Monday thanks for being with us we have Jai Sri Radhe she's busy making deity beds getting ready for Lord Balaram's holy appearance day which is just around the corner on the 22nd <clears throat> we're looking forward to a gala festival there <clears throat> in Salt Lake City particularly uh, Prashant, thank you very much for being on board. Jairati says, I need unlimited mouths. That's a problem. I get ahead of myself and then I <coughs> get <coughs> choked up here. <clears throat> Prashant has given us some connections here with verses. If I click, I'm going to use the, lose the comments thread. So I'll leave that to you. Oh, he's, he's clicked on our original verse 1522 for today. Bhakti Gary, thank you. Obeisances, glory to Prabhupada, Subhadra, Hare Krishna. Here's Prashant with the uh, uh, seventh verse, uh, fifth verse, seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Later on in the seventh chapter, Maya Dakshana Prakriti is giving us that verse. Uh, Aja Garaj Dananya Shodana Taiva Maja Budhim Janaha. <clears throat> lots and lots of good verses, but Anti Tat from Vishad. Prashant's been right with us all along. I don't think he's dropped a single verse. And right here is the last verse from the Shiksha Shakam Cheto Darpana Marginal. Thank you so much for this service here, Prashant. <clears throat> Jai, Ra Jai Ra Shri Radhe, uh, freaking on fire, on loving this. <laughs> Playing in the band, what a beautiful class. Thank you, Govinda Day. Playing in the orchestra, the symphony orchestra. Thank you for the wonderful class. <clears throat> Ram Gishore, sorry, sorry for losing it here at the end. <clears throat> Not a very pleasant or palatable way to end the class, but uh, we do what we can with <laughs> what we have. <clears throat> Bibhuti Bikram, thanks for joining us the first time as far as I know. Uh, Brent, Brent is spending some time in nature. He posted a picture on Facebook of himself out there. In the high Uintus, looking totally peaceful, totally calm. Let's see if we can see who. I think that's that's all I have access to here. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. Nineteen. Oh, thanks for liking. Uh, Divya Josie, Prashad, Subhadra, Gary, Sanugan, <coughs> Sanugan Nadaraj. First time, Madhav, thanks Madhav, and Linda, my favorite Utah Valley interfaithist, Nam Hata Bhumagoda, for the first time as far as I know, Sanjaya Sharma, frequent visitor, Rakesh, Jai Rakesh, Ram Kishore, Rupa Manjari, Jean, Nanda Gopal Swami, thanks for joining us, and again, Vibhuti Bikram. <clears throat> so before my throat becomes completely choked up with cough, I'll take your leave. We'll be back tomorrow for Transcendental Tuesday with more on this amazing, amazing verse and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Have a great Krishna conscious day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare.